Hi, I'm Bob Lavalley. I'm a ministerial intern with the Church of the Larger Fellowship. This week we're talking about everyday miracles, miracles that are commonplace. We just saw that video by Louis C.K., the comedian. And by the way, that's probably the first and last time you'll see a video by Louis C.K. as part of a worship service. But he's talking about how amazing it is to fly, and yet how we seem to take it for granted. There's a lot of things about technology that are absolutely, that seem miraculous, you know. I remember when I was a little kid, I dreamt of the idea of having a computer that would have all the information in the world on it, and that I could just, that I could access, you know. But it's funny, I, I was so limited in my imagination, I couldn't picture anything smaller than, than Batman's computer, and that it would fit in my, in my closet. Of course, now we all carry these, these computers in our pockets that have all the information in the world on them for all the good that it does me. So, but, but technology is amazing, but it's, it's not a, mir a miracle. It's just, it's just us advancing in a weird sort of way. So, and similarly, you know, people talk about the miracle of nature, and nature is profoundly amazing and awe-inspiring, uh, but I don't think it's a miracle, you know. And take, for me, the most amazing thing about nature at all, which is childbirth, you know, the fact that out of a person comes a whole other person with all of their possibilities and potential, and it's just, it's, but it's not a miracle, it's just the most natural thing ever, and in fact, if it didn't happen, it would be the end of our species, so... Uh, amazing, awesome, beautiful, lots of food for thought, yes, a miracle, no. When I think about everyday miracles, I think about the times where something comes at me by surprise that I'm not looking for, or not asking for, it may not necessarily even be welcome, but that causes me to grow a little, a little bit, just an inch. Some little piece, some little piece of information that pushes me a little farther forward uh, on my path of personal development. You know, I'm thinking of a time uh, when my mom was very sick and actually dying from brain tumors. And uh, it was a slow and then precipitous decline, and it was a really bad time for me, and I frankly was not handling it very well. And I was living in Boston at the time, even though she was in Buffalo. And one time I got back from Buffalo and went to in Boston, and a friend of mine took me to see Ram Das, Ram Das, the guru and spiritual leader. And he was talking, he was showing his movie Fierce Grace, and he was he gave a lecture afterwards. And in that lecture, he had recently suffered from a stroke, and so he suffered from a, a condition called aphasia, which means that you can think of the word but you can't get it out of your mouth. And that was actually, my mom had the same thing as a result of her brain tumors. And it was really painful to watch. Um, and so I sat at this, during this lecture from Ram Das, and it was so reminiscent of what I was experiencing in my own home that I just wept. I mean, the people around me must have been really freaked out by me because I just cried the whole time. Uh, and then afterwards, there was a special reception, which my friend brought me to, and bless her heart. And he was receiving people, and so I waited in line, and when it was my turn, I went and kneeled by his wheelchair. And I have to say, I'm generally very skeptical of the famous guru, because I think fame just does terrible things to people. But I, will have, to say, but I have to say, in, in Ram Dass's case, the second I encountered him, I could tell right away that he was both present and authentic, and genuinely sympathetic. So I, I really think he's the real deal. Anyways... Uh, I sat, I, I, I kneeled next to his wheelchair and I said, you know, I'm, my mother is dying and I'm really going through a bad time. And he said, your mother is dying, you're suffering, and what are you getting out of it? And I was totally shocked. I mean, what, are you, what am I getting out of it? I, that was not the answer I expected. And I said, you know, well, I'm getting my butt kicked. And I did not use the word butt, by the way. And, and, and he's, he's like, you're getting your butt kicked. I, I hear you. But what are you learning from this experience? What am I learning from this experience? Boy, that was not the advice or the comfort that I was looking for or asking for. 
And so I, I kind of mumbled something at him and just wandered off because it really, he just struck me the wrong way. But the more I thought about what he said, what am I learning from this? The more I realized that my mother's sickness with all of the sadness, the sorrow, the, the, the suffering, the pain was also an important opportunity for me to be my most human. It really was a learning experience. So, and, and the more I thought about it, the more, the more it made sense. And it really changed the way I went through that experience. And frankly, I up to then had really been mostly about numbing and avoiding and you know, not really dealing with my family. I decided to fully engage in that experience and be there for all the sadness, for all the memories and the, the small joys of being with my family as we go through this together. And that changed everything. It was still sad and terrible and I still miss my mom to this day. But it, it turned out to be an opportunity to grow, just like he said. And that to me, that little comment from that guy in his wheelchair, that was an everyday miracle. Let's pray, let's pray for everyday miracles to multiply in the world. And let's watch for everyday miracles in our own lives. And better yet, let us create spaces in our lives for everyday miracles to break through the cracks. Amen.